I'm Bill Amick, golf course architect, member of the American Society of Golf Course Architects. With me is Chad Ritterbush, our executive director. Chad, tell us, uh, I already know, but tell us a little about the American Society of Golf Course Architects. Well, the American Society of Golf Course Architects was founded in 1947, so 65 years old. And we were founded by Donald Ross, Robert Trent Jones, and a variety of other very important people in the golf course architecture field. And we've grown to 180 uh, golf course architects from North America who are practicing not only at home but around the world. The organization is about really three very important goals. Number one, we try to foster the professionalism of our members to help them be the best golf course architects uh, that they can possibly be. Uh, number two, we like to provide educational resources for golf course decision makers, from owners to superintendents, club managers, professionals like those gathered here this week at the PGA conference to help them make better informed decisions about their golf courses. And then third, we, we do what we can to help grow the game of golf. We're proud to be participating with the PGA of America and many other organizations to help grow the game, not just here at home, but all, all, also overseas as well. Very good. Uh, we're here at the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando today, and uh, I'm on a panel, and, and Chad is helping me out, and we'll talk about uh, smaller alternative golf courses to introduce people to uh, the game, to try to bring more people into the game. And I, I'm, my particular subject is, is academy courses, and I'm going to tell you about how those work. So I, uh, I know Chad is very supportive of this entire program to bring people into the game. Yeah, and, and Bill, you're absolutely right. The academy courses and alternative golf facilities are extremely important uh, to the game of golf and its, and its future uh, because they can help welcome new players to the game. And that's an important part of uh, what golf needs to do over the next decade because the, the decade to come in the golf industry is certainly different than the decade uh, that was. And I, you've been a leader on this subject for, for decades now. Bill. And maybe you can talk a little bit about about the concept of academy golf courses and, and what it is that they can help. Well, they are smaller, less expensive, uh, lower maintenance. They they can be played faster. The beginners are more comfortable with them. So uh, that, that's what uh, a lot of people want to play golf, but they get discouraged by the difficulty and the cost. Jed, also, we're, we have a meeting, an annual meeting, uh, coming up. Uh, tell us a little about uh, the ASGCA meeting. Yes, yeah, so this will be our 66th annual meeting for the American Society of Golf Course Architects. And we'll be in Chattanooga, Tennessee, home of three wonderful uh, golf course golf courses that not only provide a, a rich playing experience, but a, a wonderful uh, laboratories from which to learn uh, about the golf course architecture craft. Uh, we'll be in Chattanooga for several days uh, learning about golf course architecture. Uh, about 80 to 100 of the members of the American Society of Golf Course Architects, which is the, by far the biggest um, uh, organization of golf course architects around the world. They will be gathering to teach uh, one another, share best practices, share information. We'll be hearing from experts uh, from both the playing side of the game to the golf course uh, industry itself. Um, it should be a great uh, few days. Right. It's great to be with you here in Orlando at the PGA Show. And uh, thank you for telling us a little about our Thanks great for, organization. Thanks for the chance to be with you.